In this video, we're going to learn how to implement the game Rock, Paper, Scissors in Python. First, we'll ask the user to select a move, or what's called a throw in Rock, Paper, Scissors, and the user can select either rock, paper, or scissors. Then, we'll randomly generate a throw for the other player that we'll call the AI, and we'll compare the two throws to determine the result of the game. Finally, we'll ask the player if they want to keep playing or if they want to quit. So we'll import the random module to help us select the throw by the AI player. Then we'll have a while loop with the condition true because the loop is going to continue indefinitely until the user decides to quit. Next, we'll output a menu of options for the user and the user will be able to select either rock, paper, or scissors. So here we'll have print and then backslash n to output a new line character. The call to print will also by default output a new line character at the end of this string. So in total we'll have two new lines. And this is just to give some separation between our menu and any other output that came before it. Now we can output our menu options. We'll have here print and then one, rock, print and then two, paper, and print with three, scissors. And so these are the three options that the user can select. We'll prompt the user now to enter their choice using the input function. So we'll have here selection is equal to int input and enter throw colon. So the input function is going to prompt the user with the text enter throw. It's going to return the string that the user enters. We're expecting the user to enter in either one, two, or three. So we're going to use int to take that return value from input and convert it to an int. And we'll store that int into selection. Now, based on the selection the user has made, we'll set their player throw to either rock, paper, or scissors. So here we'll have if selection is equal to one, then the player throw is going to be rock. Else if the selection is equal to two, then we're going to set player throw equal to paper. And finally, if it's not rock or paper, we're going to set the player throw to be scissors. So we'll have player throw is equal to scissors. Now technically, instead of using a menu, we could have asked the user to enter their throw directly, as in the string rock, paper, or scissors, but a menu should make it easier for the user. Now we can open the player throw. So here we'll have print and then new line to again put some space between the menu and this output of the player throw. And then we'll have print and player throws and we'll output the player throw here. Now for the AI player, we're going to randomly choose their throw. We'll have these options. We'll have throws is equal to a list with rock, paper, and scissors. Then we'll use the choice function of the random module to randomly select one of these throws. We'll have here AI throw is equal to random dot choice throws. And this choice function is going to randomly choose one of these three throws in the throws list. It's going to return that throw and we're going to store it into the AI throw variable. Now we can output the AI throw. So here we'll have print and then AI throws followed by AI throw. Next, we can compare the two throws to determine the result of the game. Now, if the player throw is equal to the AI throw, then the game is tied. So first we'll have if player throw is equal to AI throw, then we'll output tie game. We'll have print tie game. Otherwise, we need to check for all the other possibilities. So for example, if the player throw is equal to rock, then we'll check the AI throw to determine who won the game. So if the player throw is equal to rock, then if the AI throw is equal to paper, in that case, the AI wins because paper covers rock. So we'll have here print AI wins. Otherwise, if the 
AI throw is scissors. In this case, the player wins. So we'll have here print player wins. Now I will fix this condition up here and fix the spacing here, but we're going to continue this pattern to handle the rest of the possibilities in the game. So let's check now if the player throw is equal to paper. So I'll have here else if the player throw is equal to paper. In this case, we'll check for the possibility that the AI throw is scissors. So we'll have here if AI throw is equal to scissors. In this case here, the AI player will win because scissors beats paper. So we'll have here print and then AI wins. Now, if the AI throw is equal to rock, in this case, we'll have player wins because paper beats rock. So we'll have here print player wins. And then finally, we'll check for the possibility that the player throw was scissors. So we'll have here else if player throw is equal to scissors. And in this case here, we'll check to see if the AI throw was equal to rock. And if the AI throw is equal to rock, then the AI player will win because rock beats scissors. So we'll have here print AI wins. And then finally, the last possibility is if the AI throw is equal to paper. And in this case here, the player wins because scissors beats paper. So we'll have here print and then player wins. And that is all the logic that's required to determine the result of the game. So let's think about how these nested if statements work. So in the case that the player throw is scissors, we're going to check using this nested if statement here, if the AI throw was rock or if the AI throw was paper. And those are the only possibilities because we know the AI throw is not scissors because we already handled the case that the throws are the same with the first if statement condition. So once we've determined what the player throw is in the branches of this outer if statement, these nested if statements only need to look at the two remaining possibilities for the AI throw. So the last thing we'll do is give the user the ability to quit the game. We'll have here print and then a new line because we're gonna give the user a new menu here and we'll say print and then one, play again, and then print, two, quit. And again, we'll prompt the user to enter their choice and we'll store their choice into selection. So we'll have int and then input and then enter choice. And if the user does enter in two for their choice, then we'll break to stop the loop. So this break statement here will stop the loop, which will allow the player to quit the game. So we can save our program and test it out. We'll enter in rock for our first throw. We get player throws rock, AI throws scissors, and we get player wins. We'll play again. This time we'll pick scissors. And now we get player throws scissors, AI throws scissors, and tie game. Now we'll quit. So our program is working. And so this is how we can implement the game rock, paper, scissors in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.